Okay, so to set up this Grease Weasel Mark 4, we just dive into Google, type in Grease Weasel V4, and if we scroll down, we've got Kia's GitHub page here. So we're going to click on that, and then we're going to scroll down to the bottom here, and we're going to go to Download Grease Weasel. And it will work on Mac, PC, uh, and Linux. It's less tested on uh, Mac and Linux, but certainly will work. We've had it working absolutely fine on Mac. Um, so uh, a couple of other options for you there. Today we're going to do this on Windows. So the first thing you need to do is download the latest stable edition uh, version 0.30 of the Grease Weasel tools. And we're going to go into downloads here and just save that. Okay, that should start downloading. And once that's down, we can select it and extract it. Yeah, we'll just extract it into the downloads folder for now. There we go, straight forward. So we can go in there, we've got our GW tool and uh, various other libraries that we need for Grease Weasel. So at this point we'll jump into the command prompt, uh, nice and easy to do, so we'll just scroll down here, click on Windows, uh, type in CMD, return, and there we have our command prompt. Okay, so let's make that a little bit bigger. So what we're going to do here, we're going to change to our downloads folder. And if you hit tab there, it will auto complete the nearest match. We don't want documents, we want uh, downloads. Once again, I'm doing this uh, using the mobile phone to film. Uh, we will get some live streaming set up and uh, get some proper videos done. But again, this is just to help you guys out on day one. So uh, in here, we've got a Grease Weasel uh, folder. So I'm gonna change into Grease Weasel there, there we are. and we've got uh, yeah, Grease Weasel CD. I mean, you can put this anywhere you like, it's just in the downloads folder now because that's where we've unpacked it. You probably put it somewhere a bit more convenient. So, the first thing to do with your drive connected is type uh, GW info. Uh, that will tell us if the drive's connected. So we've got not found there. So I'm just going to double check our cabling. Yeah, all our cabling is in. There we go. I've just got to turn on the power button on the USB hub. That helps. So I do GW info. And there we go. We know it's talking to the drive. It gives us the drive serial number, the speed, COM port 4, and confirms it's a version 4. Now this is on firmware uh, 0.27. I would highly recommend that you update this to the latest version, uh, at which point you can just type GW update and run that and GW space update will download the latest version onto your Grease Weasel. And I highly recommend you do that because that will help you ensure you've got the latest, most stable version, cut out any problems or bugs you might face on different systems. Uh, okay, so we're going to move forward now and do a test. So we're going to type GW seek uh, hyphen hyphen uh, drive B uh, 80. Okay, so at the end of that last clip, you probably heard a buzzing sound in the background as we entered our seek command. That was just telling the software to move the drive heads uh, via the grease weasel on our PC floppy drive. That then simply tells us that we know that the uh, system not only recognizes the grease weasel, but the grease weasel is communicating with the floppy drive. So now what we can go ahead and do is read a floppy disk so uh, I've got, uh, I think, an Amos uh, Examples Amiga disk in the PC floppy drive. So I'm just going to go ahead here and type in uh, GW uh, read uh, hyphen hyphen uh, 
drive equals now you can put equals zero or equals one uh, I found it worked better uh, entering equals one it may be different on your system uh, so if it is just try zero but one is uh, what works for us uh, and then the name of the file you want to save it to so we're going to call it uh, test5 uh, .adf adf being the Amiga floppy drive format I heard a click and a buzz you can probably hear that familiar sound in the background which is uh, as shown on the screen that is the software reading through track by track uh, copying the Amiga floppy disk to a .adf file now for a working disk without any errors this is going to take about probably 30 seconds to a minute uh, if you have a bad disk with bad sectors the software is really clever it will try and read those sectors three times and if it can't it'll skip over them and carry on reading the good sectors uh, unless the disk is really bad you know in which case you, you may get a disk that won't read at all in which case the chances are it's probably gone past it it's never going to read on anything um, that's read in perfectly so we can see there and if we do a check in our directory now we should be able to see there near the bottom we've got test5.adf which is a copy of our physical disk which I'll just unplug and uh, show you here so that's our Amiga disk Amos Pro examples backup and we've just read that into test5.adf on the screen here we're now going to go ahead and uh, load that up into a uh, Amiga emulator just to show you that the disk image works and it is accessible. Okay, so following our last clip, we have now our test5.adf file here. I'm going to copy that or move it to the desktop directory here. The reason I'm doing that is because the uh, desktop folder is shared with both the Amiga emulator and obviously accessible through Windows. So basically both the Amiga emulator and Windows can get to any files in the desktop directory. So I'm going to go ahead here and spin up a copy of the WinUAE Amiga emulator. Fantastic product. Uh, you will require a proper Amiga ROM. Uh, now we do have these for the 600 so we can supply a license again through the RetroEZ.com store or contact us directly. Uh, we've got some pre-created configurations here. So I'm just going to go ahead and load up a default Amiga 600 configuration. And you will see on uh, WinUAE that uh, under the CDs and hard drives option uh, I've got desktop configured here at the top as a shared folder and we just do that by going to add directory or archive give it a device name so DH6, DH7 whatever you fancy give it a volume name test desktop things whatever you whatever you want and then for path we select directory and then essentially pick the folder you want to be accessible and once we've done that I'll just exit this because we don't need to do it here it will appear on there and it will appear on the Amiga desktop so we're going to go ahead and start the Amiga emulator I'm just going to move that window up slightly uh, okay so that boots up nice and quick and uh, we can see here labeled things is our desktop directory so anything that's on our computer desktop we can get to through here and you can see our test5.adf so that's a great way of moving files between machines but what we're going to do is actually mount the floppy disk so we're going to go back into WinUAE and we're going to go to floppy drives here on the left and we're going to select the three little dots in the top right and we're going to go to desktop and we're going to pick test5.adf open and then we're going to tell it to carry on with the emulator 
and you'll see as it would from a normal floppy it now loads that floppy image onto the desktop and we can access it as we would any other floppy disk uh, if it's not got icon files as you do on any Amiga folder you can choose show all files and you can see these are all from our uh, real Amiga disk imaged with the Grease Weasel 4 to uh, test5.adf image and then loaded via a real Amiga operating system uh, that will also work from a, a proper Amiga as well and you can even write it back to a floppy disk using uh, Grease Weasel uh, and again insert it into an Amiga to read it so I hope that's been useful uh, any questions please contact us and uh, thanks again we'll try and do some more professional videos moving forward